Nick Kiprios, Justin Bourne, Sammy McKee, Derek Brandale, Jen Rolnick for the next two hours on the Real Kipper and Bourne Show. Thanks for joining us. We are live on Sportsnet 590, Sportsnet 360, and Sportsnet Plus from 4 to 6 Eastern, as always. And wherever you get your podcast on your favorite uh, download, please give us a... Uh, Give us a chance if you cannot catch us live. And remember, Texas 59590, our good friend Sammy here will feel like it's worthy enough to mention. He will, he will read it, them and then discard it, them. If it gets his blood boiling, yeah, I, he I, will. I always have it open, boys. Constant eyes on it. Love All it. right. Um, just some sad news. Various reports yeah. uh, out there on former National Hockey League tough guy Chris Simon uh, passing away at age 52. Yeah. And uh, someone that I came across on a couple of occasions. You guys, fought him. I eh? fought him wow. a couple of times. He was tough. Uh, I, I, he had an issue with me, probably because I maybe chirped him a couple of times. Okay. But, uh, so one time in Quebec, we got separated a couple of times, and I, I knew it was coming the next go around at Madison Square Garden. And I knew that if... If I don't do something, he's just mm -hmm. going to be all over me. And he was. He's got to be. Was he 6'4"? It was, or something? It was, Way bigger than he, wasn't it he? may have been the number one time I was really fearful. Yeah. Really fearful. But either I was going to do this or I'm, he was going to just embarrass me and chase yeah. me all night. And I, I couldn't do that in front of uh, my teammates. Yeah. So I, I went at him and he stung me a couple. I actually came back. And held my own, but like the other guy had five or six inches on me, maybe forty-five pounds. Yeah. I had no business and, fighting the and guy. You know what? He put a lot of fear into a lot of people, but also, you know, did he? How many goals did he score the one year? He had a season where he put a bunch in the net. He, he won a Stanley Cup. He had a sixteen-goal year, a twenty-nine-goal year, yeah, a fourteen-goal year, uh, multiple fourteen-year goal, yeah, above ten, five, six times. So he could yeah, play too. Twenty-nine goal. I, year. I had him. Really, in in that same class as Probert, where mm -hmm. he was the most feared guy yeah. out there, but he could also find a way to put the puck in the net and play the game. Yeah, well, he ended up in three Stanley Cup Finals. Like I said, winning the one with Colorado. So, oh, the Flames, right? Yeah, yeah. So sad, you know. Sad news, you know. His playing career aside, it's just. Um, you know, our, our heart goes out to his family and our thoughts yes. are with them. It's, it sounds like it was a uh, sudden, so awful. Yeah, condolences to uh, the Simon family. Yeah. Okay, um, tonight, Toronto Maple Leafs and the Philadelphia Flyers mm -hmm. at the Wells Fargo Center. And usually we start off the show with uh, talking Leafs and you know some some Fourth issues line breakdown some issues or <laughs> or some uh debatable question marks going into the game but that's not the case tonight because the main storyline of this game doesn't belong to the Toronto Maple Leafs it belongs to the Philadelphia Flyers way to go torts yes uh Sean Couturier the captain of the Philadelphia Flyers has been healthy scratched for tonight along with the two guys who were on his line last game, Cam Atkinson and Gurianov, Dennis Gurianov. None of them playing tonight. Couturier is a fascinating case where, you know, he had fought to come back from injury, had been through quite a bit, had a wonderful first half of the season, like a really, really good first half. Struggling a little bit of late, but, um, yeah, played 11 minutes against Boston in a 6-5 loss and finds himself... Healthy scratched his team with a one point lead in the three seed of the division and a two point lead on the second wild card spot. They are not going to play their healthy captain with 15 games to go, 14 games to go. I can't recall over my playing career ever seeing a story where you're, you got a big game, the team's chasing a playoff spot or at least trying to hold on to their playoff spot. And you, Healthy scratch, your captain. Mm -hmm. I can't ever recall hearing a story like this. And I'm sorry, but I, I think it's the most ridiculous thing I've heard all season long, really? if not for a, the, the last few years. I'm it's really glad to hear that because I, I think it's insane. I think it's under no circumstances do you 
embarrass your team captain, mind you, not a team captain that you inherited, a team captain that you named months ago. You named him the captain, yes. You did. Yes. Along with your group, your general manager, your president, I don't know, maybe a few key guys in the room. This is the leader of your group yeah. that's not good enough tonight to play a hockey game. I, I think it's one of the most embarrassing things I've ever heard. And, you know, you know, I, I couldn't agree more with that. It just seems like such a Tortorella thing to be like, doesn't matter who you are. Doesn't it's accountability? It's whatever. And then you know, you know what Tort said when he came out to the media today? No, I don't either, because he didn't. He didn't have the accountability to come. He sent his assistant coach Rocky Thompson to answer questions. Now I think Torts is getting his cast off. They were saying he was in a sling. He had some sort of yeah. injury. It's twenty four hours in a day. Yeah, you have you, to you take got the a cast team off with your hockey team. You, you got to take off your cast at, at that, that precise time. Exactly. So you can't go out there and preach accountability. Scratch your captain with 14 games to go, and not come out and explain yourself a little bit. And for the record, if you listen to Couturier's quotes, it doesn't sound like he explained himself to Couturier all that well either. Do we don't Do, have that sound, I have we? a one clip of it, not the one that you have, but I have another one where he asked about what Torts told him. So if you want to play the yeah, clip, yeah, let's put, do it. put it in there. Has he given you any direction what to what he needs to see from you or what you need to work on to make sure you're in the lineup and getting a lot more minutes than you have been? Not really, I've gotten the same answer as you guys just need to see more uh, i'm still looking to find out what that is but um i'm trying every game I'm, I'm it's not like i'm just like sitting around or doing nothing i think like i said yesterday i felt last couple of games um with the the limited ice time or opportunities i've been getting been been doing all right but um i guess uh i guess we're going and you know with the best lineup available tonight to to make to get a win so um it is what it is so the captain the leader of this hockey club turns around and says to the media you're getting the same answer as i am mm -hmm. that's good solid communication between <laughs> your captain and your coach yeah not great and, and you know we there's another clip where he says he's frustrated the way he's been treated he talks about the 11, you know, the ice time, the limited opportunity he's he's been getting. You know, he's not a guy who doesn't work, you know, who doesn't put in the commitment or whatever. It's, you know, you can't tell me you can't put him as your 4C and play him for that same amount of ice time or something in the game your team needs tonight. And so now what have you done but created some real frustration? You've made yourself the center of attention. The, the, the focus isn't on the hockey game for your team. Maybe they get a win. I don't know. It, it, JB, even if they get a win. No, let me go further. Mm -hmm. Okay. Even if they get a win, somehow turn this around and make the playoffs, get to a conference final, get to a Stanley Cup final, even if they win the Stanley Cup, it's still a stupid move yeah. that will never be linked to turning this thing around for the team. It's still the wrong thing to do. Yeah. Embarrass Sean Couturier, who somehow miraculously saved his career when they thought it was over with his multiple back surgeries. Mm -hmm. And I don't know where that stands into where he is right now, if it's even a factor or not. But everything up until now has been led for everyone to believe that this is a legitimate captain and the right choice for the Flyers. And he's not good enough to be one of 20 in your lineup tonight. Yeah. I mean, he's under contract with the Flyers till 2030. You know, like he is going to be a part of this thing. And if it's related to back and injury and whatever, then you can come out to the media and say, you know, he's just slowed down a bit, and we want to see him get a rest here, you so, know? So I checked in with Charlie O'Connor yeah. from Philly Sports. Yeah. I texted him. I said, hey, any word on where Torts was today? Yeah. And he said, we were told he was in the building but declined to speak. So they had Rocky Thompson talk. I, asked, I specifically asked Flyers PR if it had anything to do with his hand, if he was getting a cast off or something, and they said no. Mm -hmm. He spoke yesterday after practice and didn't want to speak again. 
So I, that to me is is not that accountability thing. And the the craziest thing is just, you know, he, last game, Couturier turned one over against Boston, goes out a couple shifts later and sets up a goal that kind of sparks the Philly comeback and doesn't play after that. So Torts must have decided in that moment after the turnover, like he's not going to play again. Somehow he snuck back out in the ice. I don't know, but it's... And, you know, I don't know what you think it would have been against Toronto. It, to me, this is like, like, it doesn't not oh, like, matter. Like he, what are you suggesting? I'm suggesting that Torts loves attention and there's the most media attention here and he gets to be like, yes. look at what I'm doing. I'll hold anyone accountable. It's a bigger story when he's against the Toronto Maple Leafs than any other team in the league. Yeah. Because of the media. So I am with you 100% on that. Yeah. I just, this is... The Torts roller coaster continues for my love and hate relationship with him. Yeah. Where I thought it was coming around the corner. I was like, you know, I'm starting to like him. I see him talking about dogs and all this stuff. And then he scratches his captain against the Leafs. I'm like, this I'm is, back. This is the Babcock <laughs> stuff, though, where it feels like the ego gets too big for some of these guys and they need to insert themselves in a way that makes them a part of the story. I just, it, Torts has done a good job with the Flyers this year. Make no mistake about it. And Torts I, I believe has done a in accountability. Good job over the course of his coaching career, but he has those handful of moments where you go, Torts, you're doing it again. Mm -hmm. Okay, you're doing it again. This is one of those you're doing it again moments yeah. when his blueprint eventually runs out. For sure. You got the captain of your team. You don't think he influences opinion within your room and he's frustrated how he's been treated? He's done this He every, doesn't get to be part of the chase for playoffs after what he's been through? He's done this on every team where he just chases himself out of a situation. Brooksy, if I want to explain it to you, I would. And like if you're Briere and Jones, you defend him and back him and say this is, you know, he'll hold anybody accountable. But when things, when you miss playoffs here and you go... You know, I what happened? Th th there, here's what Breer said about him as my page spins. He had a quote on it today. He said, uh, Danny Breer on the Flyers' decision to help his crouch captain, uh, Sean Kateria, tonight. I can tell you one thing with Jar John Tortorella, it doesn't matter who it is. That's what he's known for. He treats everybody the same way. But it's that's, not. That's BS. Yeah. That's BS. Because you, do it's not true. It's a great sound bite, but it's not true. That everybody gets treated the same. That is BS beyond belief. It's not true. There's some guys that get more rope. There's some guys For that sure. get more lee leeway. Some guys have better reputations than others. I'm going to lean over. This guy gets five, ter five chances to make up a mistake. You get two. You get one. Mm -hmm. That's the way it really works. What's crazy with this particular case is that it's Sean Couturier. Because typically when he said, you're the guy who gets one chance, it's Patrick Laine or P.L. Dubois or whichever type of guy like that where, you know, a skilled guy who doesn't work, who doesn't try, who doesn't defend in the same way that Torts would expect them to, that's not Sean Couturier. Couturier's up for the Selkie every year are, he's healthy. Are they, like, the thing that gets me is, are they better with whoever they're bringing in. It's like, it's just, there's no Are world. they better tonight? You're right. There's just no world they're better without them. And so maybe you're making the case that we don't care if we make playoffs this year. This is about learning for the big picture. I bet you those guys in your lineup, it looks like the, the bottom two centers are Ryan Paling and Noah Cates. They're going to have Ollie Lixell in tonight. Mm. You know? See, this is It's a to way me, to lose a room, is it not? It's, it it's, is. I don't know, there's something about these type of coaches because we had this with Keenan where Keenan would be all over like a Brian Leach and bench him like during the conference final against New Jersey. And it's almost as if they need, they need something. They need an excuse. They need something. So if they lose, it's, well, how could I... How could I win with Brian Leach not playing like that? Playing like that. How, can I, how can we have made the playoffs when our, when our captain doesn't show up for a game mm -hmm. or I couldn't play him? I couldn't like trust him. It. It's, it's, it's on, it, it was on Couturier. It was on Brian Leach. It was on this guy. It takes. Did he really bench Brian Leach? He benched Brian Leach. Oof. During the conference <laughs> final. <laughs> and we miraculously oh my God. found a way. <laughs> <laughs> Yes. Whoa, I didn't know yes. that. Anyways.
That's just crazy. looking at Kachiri's and, and, and Mark Messier got him to admit it was a bad mistake. Yeah. The ice time for Kachiri, like he played 11-10 last game. But prior to that, he played 16-10, 14-30, you know, 17-16. Like, they had been using him. It's not like he's been so trash they, they felt they couldn't but play him in game. He's clearly hasn't, like, he's had a bad run of games here. And you look at his, his game logs, he hasn't been great. But the ups and downs of a long NHL season where sure. you're on the captain of a team that's in a playoff spot, they're not supposed to be. It's like... What what's the I just don't get the, the, upside. the upside. I just I have no idea what the upside is. No Atkinson. They just traded for Grian if yeah. he's not gonna play too. So, so. anyways. One, one one last thing oh, for me please, please. on this is that I I don't think there's a recovery from this. I actually right? think this one is kind of just gonna linger. It's it gonna will, be a no, black no. mark. It will linger for a for for an eternity. Mm -hmm. Okay. And I don't know how Couturier and, and Torts can put this behind them. It will always be hanging over Sean's head. Yeah. Right? Well, I, it's just such a crucial time. There's so, so often in hockey, you're playing preseason or you're training in the summer, you're playing preseason games or you're on a team that's not going to make playoffs. Or It's so rare in your career that you get to be in the playoff chase. These are the games where you're like, we're in the thick. You know, we can be out of playoffs. We could be up to, you know, second. We could, and he, to deny him being a part of a game against the Toronto Maple Leafs and, you know, with less than a month to go, the timing of it is just, yeah. it's, it's personal. It's personal. It's so it, personal. Yeah. Like, I, I, listen, I, I talk to ex players every day. Yeah. And it's not uncommon to hear, hear someone say, like, that guy, he ended my career. He ruined my career. He Yeah. And then now you're years later after and some some of these coaches they wonder why my phone's not ringing, why I'm not getting invited to certain things and it's like mm -hmm. cuz you were a dick. <laughs> yeah, it's funny cuz like, there's some very successful. It's pretty simple. Yeah. Right. And it's funny that like a guy like John Cooper can still be a, a hard ass but he, these things don't happen where he takes his best players and embarrasses them, you know, or like he manages to walk a line of being a hard guy who doesn't do these sorts of things. So anyway. All right. I think we exhausted our feelings on yeah. the, uh, a healthy scratch <laughs> on the Philadelphia Flyer captain. Yeah. I wish I could have a, I wish if it was like the Flyers hour here, but I wish I could have a zag or a, another opinion on it, but it's just impossible. Like, I guess if you're a Flyers fan and you've watched him stink for a few games, you're like, ah, oh, well, I guess, but it's I can't just believe Torch isn't talking about it. He's no, that's not crazy. Someone, I know this is a big well, deal. Well, he can't hide from it. I, I, and he's saying, like, I am I wish I didn't have to do this, but here's why, you know, or whatever. But the like, fact he didn't speak, that he sent anything. Rocky Thompson out there today, and Rocky Thompson's like, well, I can't speak to it. It was Torch's decision. Right. It's like, well, what are, you what are we doing, doing here? Anyways. In about 12 minutes, well, we're going to welcome in Scott Hartnell former NHL or former Philadelphia Flyer does uh, some great Played work. Former Torts player. <laughs> so oh, we... there's plenty to chew yes. <laughs> on, on this conversation. Uh, presently now with the NHL Network as an analyst, so we'll uh, have an interesting pickup on this conversation with Scott Hartnell. Mm -hmm. uh, in the meantime, the Leafs get ready. Uh, where do you want to start in terms of uh, storylines from a Leaf angle, is it simply Samsonov going back to Samsonov tonight that uh, surprises us? How are you guys feeling about talking with the Leafs the next month? Great. Just in Not terms you? of, just in terms <laughs> of like unique storylines for the yeah. rest of the time. It just feels like they can't move up. Really, they can move down if they really go in the stinker, but it doesn't feel like they're going to do that. Mm -hmm. You know, Marner's hurt. When he gets back, I guess that's something else. But it really feels like we've moved into the last the annual last month malaise with the leafs here they got the malaise well no it's just but it, i think you know you look at the standings not a lot of teams are you know there's the crappy bottom but not a lot of teams are playing for a lot the top teams in the east they're kind of set yeah and if you've got that attitude that there's just nothing to play for in the what the next 16 games like i think they're making a bad mistake i think well, there's there's so many interesting storylines well, what, what do here. you what do you coach if you're a key for over this next stretch like what are you talking about the, the, the special teams special teams okay. 77 uh, percent penalty kill pairings. pairings 
lines? It's it's about finding what how to optimize this group. You know, the McMahon has made a case for himself to play more. Holmberg has He's, played all through the lineup. They're big stories. And they're not big stories just waiting for game one. To me, they're big stories for the, for the next 16 games mm-hmm. and how they continue to progress and how they get themselves mentally, physically, emotionally, spiritually ready for the Stanley Cup playoffs, which he's never experienced before in his life. With, yeah. I mean, that's, to me, that them, how they kind of handle these bigger games sports. Because they have, how many games against Tampa that they have coming up? I think they got a couple against Tampa. They have Florida, Florida coming up twice. Like, they're going to get some tests here. Mm-hmm. And I think the Tampa one, one of them is the very last game of the season, so you don't know what's going to be happening in that one. But, like... I'm watching Tampa right now just play every game like they're in the Stanley Cup playoffs now mode. Well, that's kind so, of stuck to the Leafs that all these teams are around them. Like, so the Leafs got to start prepping themselves for this. And a lot of people obviously focused on the last minute and a half against Saturday night, but there was a sense there for 40 minutes that they had that that style of play that was conducive to what they might see in the mm-hmm. in the playoffs out yeah. of uh and Carolina's a good team. But Carolina to me is the type of team that I would like the Leafs to play in a playoff series as opposed to one like the Bruins or the Panthers where they don't really have a ton of snarl on their team. Like I feel not, like they're not a much... ton, but they're big and heavy. Yeah, but and not they the, do lean. Not in they the same lean. way as Boston or Florida. Like that it, yeah. it's, different. It's a different division. It's, it's a different, different world. It's funny I was watching uh our boy Biz, who you know we talked to on once in a while here, Biz Nasty was was talking to uh, Ryan Whitney about uh how tough the Leafs are, you know, and how the Leafs do have and they haven't had guys who are tough the way that they have guys now who are willing to fight and get in your face and all that. And okay, I am, okay, who just off the bat, like who's it's Edmondson and Labushkin and Benoit and McCabe and okay. Reeves and you know there's there's a number of guys at least Bertuzzi. more Bertuzzi just more willing, but I am curious to see if it matters when it's still not at the core, yeah. which is a common thing that I beat up on. But you know, will that they be able to handle whoever plays them is going to lean on the four main guys up front? So we'll see if those other guys who are physical can slow that down in some way. Mm-hmm. All right, the Leafs are looking for their ninth straight win against the Flyers. Which is that's a it's a lot of wins. That's nice. It's nice to, yeah, to big number here. Well, they've stunk for a while, and the Leafs been really good in the regular season, so it doesn't surprise you totally. All right, let's go to Sheldon Keep for our first Kippers Clipper on playing the Philadelphia Flyers tonight. Well, they're a team, you know, like a lot of us that are playing to qualify for the playoffs, and and things are getting tight around just so so. Uh, you know, for that reason, and, and they're a proud team, you know, and they're coming off a loss in Boston, a you know, loss against us. So, yeah, they're going to be, uh, you know, they're going to play well. They're going to play hard. Um, I fully expect a response. We talked to our team about that here today. Obviously, you know, uh, something like scratching their captain is, you know, like all those kind of things get get your team's attention. So, you know, we, we certainly expect their best tonight. So, Kipper, you weren't here last week when they played. But the, they left the top power play unit on yeah. when they're up six one. Rocky Thompson was screaming at Sheldon McKeith. Can you have like a like? Is there going to be a, a fight because of that? Does that matter? I, like Delorie is back in the lineup yeah. tonight. Reeves is like. Does that really matter? Probably not as much as you would. I, not crazy about it either, but that tends to be my old kind of school. Thing at the end of the day, six two seven two eight two running up the score. I know how you feel, and I'm I'm not dead set against it as much as I would have been maybe five or ten years ago. It's yeah. like watching these stupid celebrations now, and it's like I don't even have a feeling on celebrations anymore. <laughs> yeah, like, that's hey, so hey, true. Do do whatever you need to express yourself, yeah. and then we'll just drop the puck. Did you see that kid in the yes. WHL with the selfie stick? Yeah. yeah. It's like, oh, my God. But you know what? Like, it, when no one is offended by I it, it, it loses its teeth. I know. I don't yeah. care. And you don't care about the selfie stick? What's happened, Kim? Well, that's what I'm saying. Like, the, the, I heard some story, right? in, like, minor league, whatever, my, my son's age, based some, you know, eight-year-old kid did, like, a canoe after we got a two-minute ta- uh, taunting penalty or unsportsmanlike penalty. I'm like, what are we doing? Unsport- yeah, well, Was I anyone s- offended by the kid canoeing? Did you see the kid do the worm? 
It is yeah. yeah. It's like first I mean, intermission in Calgary. Yeah. Yeah. It's terrible. Oh, was it an intermission? Oh no, no, it was, it was a yeah. shootout. Something. Oh, I yeah. thought it was like no, a it was a nothing. Game. Okay, well, but whatever. listen. Throw them out there, okay? Yeah. But like to to be truly upset, I I think you've got bigger fish to fry right now. You do. Then worrying about a team putting out. I actually think they're, they're, even they're if number the point, one power play. Even if the point is correct that the Leafs shouldn't have done it or the team in the lead shouldn't do it, it's embarrassing to say anything about it as the team trailing. Hey, stop doing that. Quit doing the goal trying yeah, other I, team. You That's know my thoughts. Pathetic. Yeah. I would have been just as pissed as them. Right. Yeah, it's pathetic. For sure. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, I don't know what to tell you. I, I get it. You got some cookie monsters that, out there that yeah. want, you know are gunning for 70 goals. So like you and you don't have the guts to Stand up to them saying that's enough. Yeah. Right? So Fair that's enough. on. But whatever. It's, it's your business. By so the way, the, the Flyers' oh. run of schedule is, so they lost to the Leafs, Boston, Leafs, Carolina, Boston, Florida, New York Rangers. Oh, my God. <laughs> so, they could be out of the playoff They're picture. missing playoffs. They're missing playoffs. That and is... the, only, the only thing they have going for them is Caps aren't great, Islanders aren't great, Red Wings aren't great. Who's going to take the spot? That is a gauntlet of all gauntlets. Though. That's rough. They, they they may head into April multiple points out of a playoff spot. Yeah. All right, where do you want to go with uh, your next uh, Kippers Clipper Let's there? Let's talk about uh, the decor. Um, tonight, Benoit draws back in. He's going to play with Jake McCabe, uh, Riley with Brody, Edmondson, Lilligren. Let's listen to Sheldon Keefe on the Leafs decor. Yeah, I think, uh, you know, we like how the pieces have, have fit in here. Obviously, we're without Labushkin here tonight, but with he and Edmondson, it gives us... Uh, far better depth. Um, really, since their arrival, we've you know essentially just been kind of rolling the three uh, D pairs and not concerned about matchups or anything like that. We think uh, each pair can can take on um, you know any matchup or responsibility, and, and we don't have to go chasing things. So that uh, we think is helpful, and then and then uh, you know, as I'm sure we'll see tonight with Benoit coming in, like we've got other guys that are hungry that. Uh, you know, can can push the group and can help us respond to illness or injuries like we're going to go through here today. So those are all healthy things for us. So, I mean, you, there's two ways to listen to that clip where he's like, yeah, we can match our center. He's like, or it's like, none of them are very good, so it just doesn't really matter to us. Yeah, I, I mean, that's more he says they don't have to chase matchups with these <laughs> pairs, which is interesting. But who would you match up against the other team? Like, if you had to, I guess it's going to be Riley and... L- Labushkin, like it's just to me they can put anyone out there. It's gonna be the same results. Yeah, there's not a clear shutdown pair. Benoit McCabe's gonna be interesting because Brody and McCabe have not proven they can be a good shutdown pair. Like if Benoit, guys, there's a world where Brody's the guy out. Am I crazy there? I mentioned that I think a week and a half ago, two weeks ago that like. He could use a night off. Like if Edmondson and Lilligren can kind of find something as your third pair, and Brody and Benoit, or sorry, if McCabe and Benoit click it all, ah, Riley and Labushkin. And- there, 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 there isn't a world that you really think that the Leafs could have a legitimate shot of, of getting out of the first round if somehow Brody does not find a way to to come back to being a top four guy for them, is there? Well, I wonder then if he's a guy, like you said, that like Tavares, who he looks best with rest. Like, could Brody use a rest, like you said, and actually come back and be a better version of himself? Because the version he's been lately has not been. I gotta think inspiring. if he if he continues to kind of struggle here, that that rest will come sooner, opposed to the last five games. Mm-hmm. Like, I, I think he he could he could use a reset. Yeah, it actually makes more sense to happen now than later. But, yeah, I just, I have a hard time believing that Keith would do it. Like they should, The other been, coach just scratches captain. Well, yeah, but oh, there's a conversation to be had about the differences between Sheldon and John Tortorella. Yeah. But I just think that, like, they've been through so much together, those two guys, and it just feels like he's been his top pair guy. And, I mean, you look at these lineup again tonight, Riley Brody right back at you, top pair. Mm-hmm. It's just, it feels that they're going to live and die with him playing most nights and you know, it might happen, but listen, I, I look at uh, Edmondson and Lilligren and 
this is now the push for Lilligren to turn into this offensive uh, pace of play type of guy when he's on the ice. I think he's – I'm interested in watching him tonight because I think he's got green light written all over him. I watched the power plays back that he was on for them. What a rally killer. Oh, my God. Every time the puck, puck touched his stick, stick, he shot it. And just like, you know, you've got – it's Matthews and it's Tavares and it's Nylander and it gets to Lilligren who shoots one from 60 feet and the goalie catches it or whatever. Like, okay. Yeah. You know, I, I don't know. Maybe he'll be better with a little more time, but it's uh, it didn't go well last game. I guess growing up, he was a, like an offensive type of defenseman. Yep. Right? He was drafted. He as was that. drafted as a guy that mm-hmm. could produce points. Yeah. What's the best year he's had so far as a Leaf producing? Has he had thirty points? I'd be shocked if he has. Um, I'm looking. You get the Jeopardy music out the here. The Jeopardy music and the grand total. His highest point total 18. is twenty three. I, lo- I lied. I was going to say twenty three. Yeah. Twenty three. Yeah. He's at twenty right now in forty seven games. How do you think Morgan Riley's? going to handle this for what the third or fourth time he in has the last to. few years where he's just he has to know bumped off i think you can explain it to morgan that you're trying to give this kid a chance to find confidence and to matter and be relevant to the team but yeah i talked about brody being out in playoffs it's not a pause it's really hard to not see let's say it's a seven game first season or a series it's hard to not see benoit playing in like five of them to me because it's just bigger problems, and at least he's steady and reliable and does his thing. So, All right, let's go. All, All right. right, we're going to take a quick break, and when we come back, we'll get uh, Scott Hartnell. We'll talk a little flyers, and we'll come back and revisit uh, the Leafs, including going back to Samsonov. Wild. Where does that leave Joseph Wall? Presumably playing tomorrow. Yeah, playing tomorrow. Where does that leave <laughs> the rest of the regular season? I don't know. Who's leaning towards who? We'll get into that more when we return to Real Kipper and Bourne. All right, let's welcome in Scott Hartnell. Played on a few teams, but the one that's really interesting right now is the one that he played that was coached by John Tortorella. It's Torts time. Hearts, what's up, buddy? How are you? <laughs> I'm great. How are you fellas doing? We're good. We were thankful for John Tortorella to give us a nice storyline to lead our show today. Scratching his captain tonight in a very important game. You're, 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 not, you're, high speed chase? you're not about to get arrested, are you? No, do you hear that? No, was, uh, an ambulance just uh, squeaked by us. I'm heading to hockey practice here with my boy and then uh, heading down to the do the pre and the post for uh, Wells Fargo Center tonight. So a busy couple hours here right now. But, yeah, it's uh, like you said, Coot's getting scratched. It's uh, I'm scratching my head wondering why. And I, honestly, all afternoon I, I'm just thinking, like, is this a game plan? Is it a head game? Is it a you know, wake-up call to the group uh, that no one's safe? Everyone needs to play better. You know, all these things are going through my mind, and I really haven't put my finger on anything. Well, we're certainly glad you found time for us, and, and thank you for that. Um, in saying that, uh, is there anything that you've experienced having him as a coach one time in your career in Columbus that can compare something like this? Uh, well, yeah, you know, I've been scratched, you know, probably three, four regular season games. And uh, we were playing the first round in the playoffs against Pittsburgh. And, you know, it's a, obviously the uh, playoffs are rough and tough. You need to fight for every inch. You need guys, you know, finishing bodies, uh, you know, kind of on the four checks. And that's basically my game in a, <laughs> in a nutshell, right? And uh, it was my birthday, April 18th. And game four, we we're down 3 nothing to the Pens. And he called me and he's like, uh, just a heads up, you know, just so you're not shocked when you walk in. Uh, you know, I know it's your birthday, but you're not <laughs> your pipe tonight. I was like, you know, a little bit upset. <laughs> I might drive, yeah. drive in there, and I'm like, oh, my gosh, so how is this uh, summer going to be for me? What, uh, you know, kind of the, the exit meetings and stuff if we lose tonight. And uh, anyways, uh, you know, that was kind of the, the, the most, I guess, I don't know if embarrassed is the right, right word, but 
uh, you know, kind of head scratcher, whatever. And, and uh, so I, I know how Coots feels. You know, he, he got named captain, you know, five, six weeks ago. And then basically, like, the game after that, it was his ice time started to dip, you know, a couple minutes each game, playing, you know, 10, 12, 13 minutes instead of 19 or 20. And, you know, you talk about production, you can't really – can't really get points in this NHL if you're not really on the power play or special teams, right? Or playing with uh, some good players, and and uh, you know, so I feel bad for him. He's trying, he's pressing a little bit. You know, you grip the stick a little tighter. You know, it's had played in two years previous, so maybe that that time off is, is really getting to him now. So you know, maybe it's a it's a hard reset for him. You know, that's how I would take it. And then uh, you know, you try to shove it up as uh, you know what when when he gets back in the lineup. <laughs> next game. So I think well yeah, put, <laughs> yeah. And like the spin from a lot of torts apologists is just that it doesn't matter who you are. You know, you can get scratched at any time. Everyone's accountable and all that. But is there a point where, as a player, you're like, I don't care, man. Like I'm the captain. I'm I'm now. I'm not going to forget this. Like, can there be a lasting scar here? Yeah. Oh, obviously, it's, you're gonna. You know, he's, he's going to look back at the year and, and you know, kind of, I guess, at the halfway point, he had the same number, exactly the same numbers that he had when he won the Selkie uh, trophy, uh, you know, for the best, of, you know, two-way forward, right? Beat uh, Patrice Berger on that year and, and you know, the same points. And then all of a sudden his minutes got, you know, slashed really almost in half mm-hmm. and he had the seal on his jersey. So I, I, I don't get it just because... You know, you're looking for this guy to lead and step up and and play those hard minutes and and all that all that stuff. But um, you know, it's it's just it's it's a little frustrating. You know, I I played with Coots for you know three four years uh, as a flyer and you know I knew him as a young kid. Obviously, I still see him around town uh, today. And you know, I know how he's feeling. It's like one of the worst feelings in the world uh, in the world as a professional hockey player to not get out there and battle with with your teammates and you're in a playoff race that's that's the the thing too that i think i think coots is struggling with like you, you need you want me to play and shut down matthews and marner and nylander and, and he hasn't really been put in a situation like that the last few weeks and and uh you know i think he's trying to figure out why and you know maybe there's a conversation uh, you know him and torts have to have to either you know kind of have a uh a bitch session, I guess, yelling at each other, or or you know, kind of calmly talk it out and say, what's what's the deal here? Well, you know, wh- why? You know, and and try and figure that out. But at the end of the day, you know, the guys got to step up, and and you know, I'm sure in that dressing room too, they're they're you know, kind of looking at each other like, oh, I can't believe he's not playing. But you know, business is business, you know, and and you got to beat this team that came in here last week and absolutely spanked them. We're talking to Scott Hartnell, former National Hockey Leaguer, and current NHL network analyst. We're talking Flyers and Leafs. Is there a thought here with the Tortorella move that uh, he's looking at something that's slipping out of his hands and maybe could use an excuse on my best players didn't show up when we needed it most. We look, he's looking in the rear view mirror. There's the Washington Capitals. There's the Detroit Red Wings that maybe uh, have maybe turned a corner a little bit here. And, uh, Something that's slipping out of his hands right now. Are they going to hold on? Well, yeah. Well, a great question. That's a million dollar question. They got you know the Rangers, Boston, Florida, Carolina. Their next four games after tonight, after Toronto. So all the teams that are at the top of the Eastern Conference. So it's you know very you know interesting to see how this week will go if they can you know go five hundred or, or win four to five. You know that, that might be a little bit of a stretch, but you know they'll put the challenge on themselves to do it and. You know, towards when he first got here last year, it was it was you know rebuild mold, got right down to the foundation. You know, figure out what we got here, blah blah blah. You know, and then this year the bar was set even lower, I think, because everyone picked the Flyers to be you know third last or dead last, right? And and so I think you know in, in that standpoint they've had a heck of a season. But now it's now it's crunch crunch time. Now you need to lean on your veterans. I, I think personally, in my view. To, to get you through this kind of this hard patch, right? And you got to play them. You got to get them out there in all situations. And you know, it's, it's it's he's doing the opposite. You know, which is you know kind of obviously it's his uh, his ship to run. Uh, you know, sh- uh, you know, sink or swim, right? So uh, that's kind of the whole the whole deal that he has, and he's he's doing it the way that he thinks uh, is giving his t- uh, team the best chance to win. 
So when you look to guys in your room and you say, okay, we're without Couturier, we're without Atkinson, and you say you're the guys who need to pick it up, the, the veterans they do have, you know, Mark Stahl and Eric Johnson aren't exactly lifelong flyers. Like, like who are the guys here in this flyer's room that can say, okay, like we'll carry the mantle in these guys' absence? Uh, well, one tip it has, has been playing really well. The top line, Morgan Frost, who is, you know, I'm sure you guys covered too. He was scratched, you know, 12 of the first 25 games, right? And mm -hmm. and he's he's been playing really well the last, uh, you know, couple few weeks. Uh, you know, Travis Konechny, uh he's got, you know, I think four assists in his last three games, and he hasn't scored, so he's due for for a big night. And and uh, you know, you got just some a lot of young guys that have kind of are. are starting their NHL career that are trying to, to prove themselves to get going. So uh, we'll see, see, see what happens. And I think Mark Stahl even is a, a healthy scratch tonight as well. Uh, so they're go <laughs> going with the youth movement tonight. And, uh, you know, we'll see where, where, where that gets them. But, you know, if I'm, if I'm the Maple Leafs, you know, I'm, you know, I'm, you got to press the pedal down here in the first five minutes and try and bury this fragile team the Flyers are right now. Hey, Scott, always appreciate your time coming on the show. Have a, have a great day. Have a great practice. All right. All right. Thanks, Gibber. See you guys. Okay. Thanks a lot. Scott Hartnell. See, he's as baffled as, as I we, say, we were to start the show. I feel better about our takes hearing someone like him be like. I mean, he covers the team. Yeah. He played he's for like, I don't know what this is. Uh, I just uh, was looking at for an article from when Hart was, Hartnell was scratched. Mm -hmm. um, this is from Joey Alfari from NBC Sports. Hart scratcher. Torts explain while Hartnell was scra a healthy scratch, and then you go through, and it's all about this. Uh, since becoming the head coach of the Blue Jackets, Tortorella hasn't been shy about leaving his mark on his new team. Listen, Here, how many? This is twenty fifteen, bud. Yeah. If we backtracked Tortorella over his coaching career, there, there's a dozen of these head scratching uh, scratches. Yeah, does that? <laughs> yeah, you're there, you're there, you're right. I don't want to repeat that. I, I saw the hamster wheel. <laughs> I said it right. I said it right. Yeah. yeah. And it's 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 a thing with him, mm -hmm. where he's, I don't know, sitting in a dark room, going, "What can I do to really grab some attention here?" Yeah. Yeah, you know and that that does seem like part of it. Milestone. Too. He just mentioned me part of the story. Uh, or his birthday, yeah, right. A playoff game on his birthday. That stuff. A playoff game on his birthday. That, that stuff, I'm sure, finds a way to factor in on his decision on having a bigger impact. Someone, uh, I reached out to someone in, uh, who covers the Flyers too, and said that uh, another big one was that he scratched San uh, Sanheim with a text message uh, on his homecoming game to Calgary with his friends and yes. family he had traveled to see. Ho he doesn't care about uh, people in their hometowns yeah, either. Yeah, this year. Yes. Yeah. That one's also been noted by a few players over his career. It's at the homecoming or the homecoming. friends and family. Like, I'll Don't show care. you who's, yeah. Don't care. Yeah. You know, non factor. So, as much as guy but, people love to be like, he gets the guy's attention, whatever, it's like, yeah, you I mean, don't it's Travis Sanha. Like, you know, if you're scratching a, a guy that's a bubble guy in his hometown or whatever, I'm not right. going to get his bent out of shape. Like, I, I got bent out of shape with Simone Benoit against Montreal. I thought that was a little bit yeah. sketchy or whatever. Sanheim's the number one guy. Yeah, he's like, really? Uh, I, don't, I don't care if it's your first time in the NHL or at any point, if you played 10 or 15 years, going back home. To play mm -hmm. in a town that you grew up in is a big mm -hmm. deal. Mm -hmm. A big deal. And you know who it's a big deal for, too? Those people who are a part of your rise? Teammates. Ah. Teammates as well. Okay? We all know whose hometown we're going to. We know who's going to see friends and family and school teachers and fellow students because we see them waiting after practice. we see, It's a big deal. Mm -hmm. So, Sammy, I get what you're saying, that if it was a, a star, it's yeah. one thing, but it doesn't matter doesn't to matter. any of us. It kind of, a, it, you feel it in your room, that it's it's awkward. And we don't like to be, we don't like to feel awkward. Yeah, and I will say, you know, there is um, an, a quote from Atkinson from a month ago where he talked about how, he doesn't care about who gets scratched. It can be anyone. It's not meant to be personal. It's a wake-up call, and you got to come back and be better and all that. But 
uh, eventually, eventually this stuff sticks with you a little bit. And okay, before the break, uh, we we mentioned uh, Samsonov going back in that tonight. Yes. I am kind of surprised. I, I'm surprised too, but I think they're looking at it as a two-game set and which guy do you want to play which night. Yeah, and why not give Samson uh go back to his former team in, I think in he's Washington? I probably avoid the head games really? role. Sammy is already in his own ears a bit. Maybe not has go he won? spend has time he, with his ex-girlfriend. Has he won there? He's won there already, has he not? Uh, I can't remember. I don't... But I remember him speaking at length about how much he hated it the one time. Did remember he? the first game back there? He was like... He was oh, like, I'm a little nervous. I'm or, really nervous. And yeah. I'm like, I, you know, just. So maybe if you're going to pick a, a game for each guy, you say, who cares who goes when and might as well just. But no, I, I do think it's surprising that it's Samson off first. Mm-hmm. I think it's a statement about who's the starter and who's the backup. I got yeah, to me, it's about the, the I stat. I got to go with Sammy a little bit here yeah. that I think it's leaning towards. Like we, we, we spent the other day talking about, is it going to be every other start now for each one of them trying to prepare both of them or is this is there a sense that sammy could get nine or ten of the last 16 in? Nah, see to me it's like what's un- the split for you unless wool got hurt last game against boston unless something flared up on him then they're gonna want to get this guy back in it's now been 10 oh, yeah, days I was gonna say, well, when was that 10 days ago since wool played so to me it's like they, they're gonna want to get him back in obviously so to me, it's like, okay, we got back-to-back. They're both going to play. You're just picking which guy you want to play which game. But if it is, you know, unless something's hurt or it's about the set, then it's really, I don't know, then it would be very strange to be know. like, eh, I didn't like him against the Boston Bruins in Boston on a back-to-back. So now the other guy's the starter. I don't know. All I know is you get past tonight and tomorrow night in Washington and you got the Edmonton Oilers coming in, and I'm not flipping a coin to start – the goalie. I, I, am going, I like our talk yesterday. It's I, going to be whoever plays I, better. I'm next going two with. I had, I, I'm not sure now. I'm I'm not sure. I bet it's him. I'm not convinced right now that it'll come down to just these two starts. I think, I think Sheldon believes that Sammy's put in enough work and enough effort mm-hmm. since January first. Okay. And I know that you're. No, no, no. I I get it. I right? get it. I I know that he still has his 890 season average. Yeah. But he's probably nine, ten, nine, twelve since January first. I think I think they're putting a lot of stock in that. Well, then all I'll say is that the two starts for Wool, giving him Boston. You can't take those two and say he didn't play well enough in those games. So now we're moving on. To me, what it is is that you're you're trying to build the confidence of Samsonov, and maybe I just had the wrong read on this. They gave him the easier games to get him the confidence because they see him as the number one guy and they want him feeling better. They're less worried about Wool's confidence. And yeah, maybe this is about shaping Samson off to be their guy in playoffs. All right. For the Leafs. We don't go any further than the, against the Bruins. Tonight, the Toronto Maple Leafs, Philadelphia Flyers, it will be Samsonov's start. We'll see where this conversation starts tomorrow. Can't wait. <laughs> Can't wait. Bart Scott. All right. Our thanks to Scott Hartnell in the first hour. Don't go away as we go national next. Mike Rupp will join us as we cover the National Hockey League with Rupper. We haven't had Rupper on in a while. No, Looking forward to excited it. Excited about it. Stick around, folks. Real Kipper and Born. It's the Real Kipper and Bourne Show, the national edition, live on Sportsnet, Sportsnet 650 in Vancouver, Sportsnet 960 in Calgary. This hour of Real Kipper and Bourne brought to you by Bet365. In a few minutes, we'll welcome in Mike Rupp, NHL analyst, former NHLer. We get set for a slate of games tonight. Uh, But first of all, sad news in the hockey world. Uh, Glenn Healy and our NHL alumni issued this Uh, release uh, earlier today. The NHL Alumni Association is devastated to learn that Stanley Cup champion Chris Simon has passed away at the age of 52. Mm -hmm. Simon became a Stanley Cup champion with the Avalanche in 1995-96 season. Chris was never afraid to stand up for his teammates and played a key role in the dressing room. He was a beloved friend, father, brother, and son. We send our deepest condolences to Chris's family, friends, and former teammates during this very difficult time 
as we also send our condolences from the real Kipper and Bourne show. Yeah, echo that sentiment. Guy who scored 29 goals, went to three Stanley Cup finals. Um, you know, had some challenges post-career and um, just really thoughts with the family. It's a tough time. Sounds, you know, sounds sudden and shocking. So, As someone that competed against him and had a couple of battles on the ice with him, I can tell you that... I cannot believe you fought, Chris. Uh, I was never more fearful for my life uh, than going up against him. He <laughs> was, was he? big and mean. And the one thing that I always loved hearing is he was he was gentle off the ice. I never yeah. got to know him. But one of my best moments uh, came off of fighting him at Madison Square Garden. And this was because we, the Rangers and, and the Nordiques, we had something going there. And I watched the bout, by the way, today. 95, well. right? Yeah. 94, Simon's 95. listed at 251 on his mm. And he was all over me. Like, I could not shake him. And it was like, either I stand up to him or I'm just going to eat a crap sandwich the rest of my life. I'd have eaten so many crap sandwiches <laughs> rather than do that. And it didn't get off to a great start with me, but I, I got two or three lefts in and I cut them open. And then I held on for dear life. Did the refs find the brass knuckles you used? Or? No, no. <laughs> and then if if you Google and watch the fight, you can actually see him whisper in my ear, you're a lot tougher than I thought. <laughs> which is that which is that you're smarter than you look, but for fighting? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> a bit of a back in a comment. And I can't tell you, like after that, never had any issues with him. I was never stupid enough to ever try that again. Yeah. But it was enough to earn his respect, yeah. and uh, it was it was a good feeling knowing that he felt like I, you I, could stand in there. And I, I'm still standing. I'm I still know. here, man. There's a fight of him and Ty Domi too, where Domi goes down to his knees and gets back up. To me, it's Domi loses the fight, but looks. It's the biggest validation of his toughness ever that he stood back up to continue fighting the man. Yeah. Anyway, Simon was a, a great player, and um, again, it's a, it's a big loss for the hockey world. Yeah, and uh, listen, I, I know there's going to be a lot of follow-up stories to this, and it's probably going to revisit the whole fighting thing, uh, CTE, and I get all of that. And uh, uh, you know, perhaps we can participate in conversations like that moving forward, but today's not the day to do it. No. Agreed. So once again, we can uh, we send our condolences to to Chris Simon's uh, family. All right, how's uh, Rupper? We got him ready. Apparently, we're going on a tour of the Prudential Center All right. right now. We're told ten more seconds. Okay, ten more seconds. Yeah. Uh, plenty of action tonight, including the Philadelphia Flyers, who have scratched <laughs> Sean Couturier, their, head, their their team captain. My right? God, I can't wait to talk to a rapper on this. You, you throw it. You, you go ahead and ask him first. All right. Is he all set? There he is. There he oh, is. Here rapper, how are you, pal? I'm good. Sorry, guys. It took me a little while to get it set up in here. I'm at the Prudential Center. I got Devils Pens game tonight. And of course, I go to set up in the bowl. And you know how it is in this business. They start checking all the audios for tonight. So I have to move <laughs> up to the concourse here. But we, we love that uh, you you made the effort. We love you, that you're on Zoom. For those of you that can see him, uh, you look great. And uh, we'll, we'll get into the pens and the devils. But first and foremost, I, I think one of the biggest stories in the National Hockey League going into tonight has to be the Philadelphia Flyers trying, at, trying to hang on to a, a playoff spot and benching their team captain. Rupper, I, I sat here and talked to the boys earlier, and I'm like, I, I, don't, I don't ever recall anything like that happening. How about you? Where, where, does, where does that start in terms of uh, intrigue for you going into tonight? I didn't see that coming. I don't think anybody did. I mean, you got Sean Couture. He was just name captain a few months ago. So, um, But the one thing I have, and I'm not speaking necessarily to this situation, but just knowing torts, I joked around about this with Scotty Hartnell uh, a little while back, too. Obviously, he had him in, in Columbus. When Torts gives you a letter or Torts, um, I don't know, when when he feels like you're one of his guys, this stuff's going to happen. Because <laughs> like, he knows he's going to get a reaction, the right reaction, right? Like, 
Sean Couture, he would never have gotten that C if he's not going to handle a situation like this appropriately, right? And, like, some people might say, well, that's garbage. I I've never seen it. I don't know if it's garbage or not. We'll have to see. But I'll tell you what, he's very calculated in his decision that he does these types of things. And, and the thing I mentioned about Scott Hartnell, I remember he, he, he sat out Scotty Hartnell the one year in Columbus. Scotty came back the next game and got a hat trick. And, you know, all that does is allows Torts to take that, put it in his back pocket, and he knows that he's got that card to pull it anytime he needs uh. to spark. So I think that this is one of those situations with John Tortorella. They know they're in a spot right here. They've got to get a reaction. This is a big game, huge game. And I, I, I would have to assume that it's more about getting a reaction this game and getting Sean Couturier a proper reaction the next game and give this team a spark. We'll see if it works. So we had Scotty Hartnell on before you, and and we just we asked him about this, and, and Hartnell failed to mention the follow up hat trick. <laughs> he just left out the, the crucial detail of why Torts has gone back to this. So that's very. It funny. would have given it would have like given him credit, I think. Torts then. <laughs> yeah, he didn't want to like, validate Torts. Okay, so aside from how Couturier would feel about this, you're Garnet Hathaway or whoever sitting in the room. How do you feel? You're a point up on uh, on the Capitals, two up in the second wild card spot. You need to win games here. How do you yeah. feel about the decision? Well, I, I think um, I think it pisses me off. I yeah. mean, you know, that's that's your leader, that, but is, maybe that's the point. Again, I'm at, I, I'm trying to fill in the blanks here. Yeah, yeah. It doesn't make sense. The knee jerk doesn't make sense. Like, why would you do that in such an important game? But it, it would tick me off. I think I would come out and and want to. You know, it's going to give everybody a little bit of a wake-up call because if it's happening to him, it can happen to any single one of us. And, um, yeah, I mean, it's. Uh, I think that that's one of the big things. And it's big for someone in that room, and they've got some leaders in that room and, and leadership guys to step up and, and say those right things in this moment. But, listen, I don't believe at all that this is a, oh, we're going to start scratching Sean Couturier down the stretch here to make the playoffs. Like, I think this is just to throw some gasoline on the fire and uh, or could throw some gasoline out there, and this is maybe late in that match. We're talking to Mike Rupp, NHL Network analyst, former NHLer, and of course Stanley Cup champion. So Rupper, uh, Flyers are holding on right now. Uh, there's a strong push by the Washington Capitals. Uh, two teams that you're covering tonight are on the outside looking in. How, how, how does it all unfold for you in in the Metro? It's been one of the weirder, I guess, wild card. Chase is being very generous, saying a wild card. <laughs> Turtle race. Uh, yeah, that's that's being very generous. Um, I've never seen anything like this, guys. Because so uh, we were talking about this yesterday, actually, on NHL Network. I have certain measurements, and I'm sure you guys have your own, and fans have their own of who's real, who's not. How do we get to that, right? Like I have certain things that I go by a lot. Like uh, an example. This late in the year, I go by goal differential. I go by regulation wins. Um, I've always had this weird thing where I I've always said, show me any team's third line. I'll tell you if they're a Stanley Cup contender or not. Uh, and then show me if your superstars compete as hard uh, when they don't have the puck to get it back as they do when they have it. Those are all things. You got all four of those things. You're going to you're gonna be a contender for me. The Washington Capitals going into last night's game, whether it's minus 31, like, I, I, I don't understand how you can be a playoff team or in that picture, minus 31. The only way you can is everybody else around you is really struggling, too. And that's what's happening here, right? Like, I've been impressed. Spencer Carberry, I think, has done an incredible job. I, I, I remember the first five games of the season, I watched probably three or four of the, the Washington Capitals. Fellas, it was one of the worst hockey teams I've seen in the National Hockey League. It was terrible. And it took some time. Yeah. They got it going. And the fact that they got it going – with Ovi, well-documented, he hasn't been like himself. The injuries they've had, no Nick Backstrom. Power play hasn't been lights out. And Spencer Carberry's done a great job, but then I still wonder myself, is this a good hockey team? Like, everything else I've measured with says no, but they're the only team that seems like they're kind of winning and, and trying to force their way into the playoffs here. Okay, so, you know, take Philly, Washington, Detroit, the Islanders, Sabres, Penguins, Devils. Do any of your personal metrics tell you that's a good hockey team no I'm i know they don't. they don't i mean i i guess the one the one that would maybe stand out but you know it's it, 
at the end of the day, we can have all of our metrics and measurements, but at the end of the day, you got to get points, you got to get wins, and you got to find ways to do it and not shoot yourself in the foot. I'd say all season long, probably until the last month or so, the Penguins had these underlying numbers that I'm like, they're going to get in. It's going to happen. It's just a matter of, of, of time. And, and it hasn't been the case, right? Like they just can't find ways where they kind of, um, you know, they, they can't string anything together. Uh, the Islanders have been one. I've been on here with you guys this year saying, no, that team's an, an absolute farce. If rewind two weeks ago, they were the only team winning, right? Like they're the only team kind of finding their way or forcing their way in Detroit. I mean, I, I don't, None of these teams, to me, I think if any of them, one of them will make the playoffs, but it's it's by default. It's by default because you're going to be backing your way in. Uh, hey, this is going to be a pretty big drop off uh, with Wild Card two and the rest of the pack, I believe, in the East. You know, the the, the interesting part is is we look at the Washington Capitals at a goal differential of minus twenty seven. I, I don't know what the breakdown is, but. Where where are those fall on Darcy Kemper and where are those fall on Charlie Lindgren? And I'm just looking at Lindgren's last five starts, and they're two goals or less. And like, where's where's this guy in the storyline if he manages to get the Washington Capitals in the playoffs? Like far and away, MVP of the team, but can can, can you credit him like? league-wide MVP votes for being most valuable to his team? I mean, you know, it, for if you go off of what he was deemed as at the beginning of the year, like if you were to slot Charlie Lindgren as what he is and then what he means to this team and what he's done for this team, you got an argument there. Uh, I mean, Charlie Lindgren's been awesome. I actually think uh, I'm a big – I like Darcy. Uh, I, I played with him in Minnesota, so I'll put some of that aside. Um you know, I, I think that the contract he signed after they won the cup there in Colorado, I mean, when we look at it now, what he's making, it's not like crazy money, but he hasn't been probably as solid as they, they wanted. But Charlie Lindgren's kind of grabbed a hold of this. Uh, I was actually shocked. I would have been on the horn with the uh, Washington Capitals trying to trade for Charlie Lindgren at the deadline. And for me, to get a guy in, I mean, you talk about what he – doesn't make salary wise and what he's worth on the ice it would have been lights out and i think we're seeing it right now i mean it's crazy what you say it was 27 is that what they are now minus 27 yeah it's hey hey uh if you're getting in the playoffs at minus 27 you've got to have a couple special stories and i think charlie lingren's one of them so you know aside from the fringe teams in the conference there's four teams the legit shot to win the east uh boston florida the rangers and the hurricanes um, is there anyone that stands out to you since the deadline where you say, okay, you know, that team is probably the best of the bunch. I know everyone loves Florida cause they're a little bit mean. Are you on yeah. team Panthers with everyone else? I'm on team Panthers. I, I, I'm, I, I kind of am embarrassed to admit this, but I'm kind of flowing with the wind in the last few weeks. Cause all of a sudden now I'm, I'm team Canes. Like yeah. the, the, the Carolina hurricanes right now, what they did. And, and um, you know, I don't know. I, I did a couple interviews with, with Koozie since all that went down. It's just, you get a vibe. You get a vibe right now out of, in, in Carolina. Like, koozie has got a, another effort or second chance, I guess, at his, uh, you know, he's been around a long time, not a second chance in his career, but another another effort to go and win a Stanley Cup. He seems rejuvenated. Jake Gensel, uh, he's playing well. Uh, they, they're just a team that they manufactured a second line. Like, who does that? Like, when, when at trade deadline time, can you – manufacture a legitimate second line with a stud they already had in Marty Natchez. So um, that, that's kind of, I, I think I'm in the East. I've been Florida Panthers the whole time, but in the last two weeks, right in the rearview mirror, is probably the Carolina Hurricanes. I think that team's legit. Rubber, you just missed a New Jersey goal, I think. <laughs> Someone scored. <laughs> uh, no, no, they won't score. No one will score in this game until the third period. Actually, there might be a bunch. Actually, there might be a bunch in the first period. We don't know. I mean, that's the crazy thing. We never know what you're going to see with the Devils and Penguins. That's why both these two teams are in the position they're at. Okay, so saying that, you uh, you spent a, a large uh, majority of your career uh, with both these hockey clubs. Who's hurting more? right now for the position that they're in um for me i think it's the penguins i i think so 
the New Jersey New Jersey is interesting to me. Last year was a magical season. Like guys, you've been you've played the game, been around the game a long time. When everyone, when you're in the in, the, in your locker room stalls and you're looking next to you, that guy's having a career year on one side of you. You look over here, this guy's having a career year. You're playing your best season of your career. I mean, you can't. That's not going to be matched next year. And the way things went in Jersey with you know a couple of young players on the back end getting more of an opportunity, which is great, but there comes growing pains with that. The goaltending, the way it was last year, is not the same. The scoring that they were getting last year, not the same. Injuries this year, all that stuff. I think this Devils team is still set up to be very, very nice. I think that everybody just got a little too ahead of themselves from what that team did last year. And they're having a little bit of a market correction right now. They'll be back next year. I think they'll be stronger. They'll make their adjustments. They see their needs. On the Penguins, on the other hand, are a team that I think it's going to look a lot different next year. I think Kyle Dubas went out. He tried to do what he could at deadline time, saw the market wasn't bearing what he was hoping, and they kind of parked it. And, you know, they knew they needed to move Jake Gensel. They did that. And quite frankly, and you guys know Michael Bunting really well, he looks awesome in this lineup. You know why? Because no one on this Penguins team consistently goes in the net and scores greasy ways. It's hard to play against as a nuisance. Like, he is a big value with this team. He's fit in really nice. But outside of that, I mean, I think there's guys that they fielded phone calls on uh, the deadline probably with, you know, Ricard, Raquel, Lars Eller, Riley Smith. I bet you the phone was off the hook with a guy like Marcus Pedersen because his value and how good he's been. He's been arguably the best defenseman of this organization the last two years. Um, we'll see what happens down the stretch. I think prior draft, we're going to see lots of movement here in Pittsburgh. And they're going to really recalibrate going into the next year because Sidney Crosby's elite. He's still elite right now. And I think Kyle Dubas is going to do anything he can to change the face of this team going into next year. Just just quickly on, on Crosby. Listen, I, I was one of those guys a few weeks ago that said he's not going anywhere. That guy is definitely retiring a Pittsburgh Penguin. But just listening to him or watching his body uh, language here, I'm I'm not as convinced as I was weeks ago, Rupper. How about you? I've got I've got zero inside scoop on this. Obviously, I played with Tanger, or sorry, Tanger and well, Tanger, Gino, and Sid. I would never ask him this. I, I can never imagine him playing in a different uniform. But I also can't imagine him dealing with losing much longer. And that's a big difference. Like this guy, Sidney Crosby, the face of hockey. He's been, I, I don't need to tell you all the things. Everybody knows he's highly, highly regarded as a human being. People don't realize he will rip your limbs off to win in hockey, <laughs> to win in any competition. If you're playing soccer, warming up in the hallway, he is a competitor. If they don't make the playoffs this year, and it's, it's a long shot for them to do it. And next year, something happens and it doesn't look the same. I think all bets are off. I mean, there's going to be some question marks this summer when the contracts can start coming up and be able to talk about it. But, yeah, I can't imagine him being anywhere else. But I even more can't imagine this guy not going on a deep run before he retires. And if he doesn't see that here, I don't know what's going to happen. You know, it's not impossible for them to get in just based on how poor the teams above them are. It's a very, very long shot. But assuming he misses the playoffs two, two years in a row, to make a big move, Dubas would have to do a big thing up here in Canada, people are talking about could Eric Carlson end up back in Ottawa? Are you thinking, is it unrealistic to think that something huge like that where, you know, a big payroll guy is on the way out? Well, I mean, listen, I I think that they're looking to do anything. I I don't believe, and I know you can go back to last season, you can mention some of the the new guys that Kyle Davis has has, has brought in. But, in all honesty, like, he, he inherited kind of a mess right like and he was very limited in how he can put his fingerprints on this team if he can move out any decent salary i think he'll do it and if that's eric carlson i think they do it if there's a if there's some a taker out there um i i think they would do that and that doesn't mean that eric carlson's been an absolute disaster that has not been the case he's actually been pretty good in a lot of a lot of games it just is a little bit of a missed cast and kind of what we're seeing this year and what they actually need as a team. And you can't fulfill those needs when you've got money tied up with some of these other, you know, contracts. So, um, yeah, I think it would, I think it's either a big one like that or some of those players, like I mentioned, 
you know, you go four million here, five million there, four million there. Start adding that up and giving yourself some money to go out and make some moves. Um, I expect some big things to happen though uh, once the season ends. Rupert, one more for me before we let you go, and that's uh, the trade deadline. We haven't talked to you since that happened, and in the West. We saw teams load up, particularly Colorado and Vegas. Did Edmonton do enough with Carrick and Adam Henrique? I think they did. I, I was one. Um, I would have gone and gotten another insurance policy, and that just because mm -hmm. they're great. Hey, nothing to do with Skinner. Like, he's the guy. Calvin Picker's been awesome. But... I mean, you're literally one goalie going cold or an injury away from you don't know. And you have a lot riding on that. But, I mean, I'm okay with what they did because I thought that they got specialty players. And I'm big on getting specialty players, not changing the whole format of your team. Um, so, uh, I'm okay. I don't think they needed to do much more. I probably would have done something in that. But, man, I mean, you talk about the big moves. The Vegas Gold Knights, these guys are like the New York Yankees uh, uh, of hockey every single year and what they just swing for the fences. They don't care about tomorrow. Uh, Colorado, the moves they made, man. Uh, some pretty pretty interesting ones, role-playing guys that can can uh, provide the intangibles come playoff times. So West got better for sure. Um, I still I still think Edmonton's going to be a tough out. Rupper, really appreciate you making an effort for us. Uh, have fun tonight uh, covering the Penguins and the Devils. All right, guys. Thank you. Thanks, Thanks Rupper. That was awesome. He's so good. What a guy. Yeah. The man. That's a workout. Is he holding his phone the whole time? That's tough I don't to know. do. And it we, was good. It, he's yeah. tough to because he's got a show from four to six a lot on mm -hmm. Sirius. Yeah. So it's it's hard to track him down. So whenever yeah. time we can get him, it's for the, sure. He's the man. Okay. Um just a little bit of a follow up off our Crosby Pittsburgh conversation. Mm. And I don't think this story's going away anytime soon. Mm -hmm. I think Sid could turn around this summer and sign a three-year deal, and I don't think that that storyline is going anywhere anytime even soon. Even if he signs. Even if he signs. I, the way he articulated it there to me was what, a way that I hadn't really heard, and it really makes sense that, like, you go into next year, sure, I'm eligible to sign. I'll sign for my money. You pay me some of the money, maybe a little more than 8.7 that I've been making for the last little while, mm -hmm. and you see the direction. You see how the season starts. You see what's going on towards the deadline. We still stink. Yeah. Then it's time. Then and, and those conversations will have to happen this summer before he signs. So he would say, I'll sign. Yes. I'm going to have a no move so I can dictate some terms. Yes. And if I don't like what's happening yes. come January. You're going to do everything you can to get me where I want to go. Which is going to make Kyle them. Dubas goes, okay. Yeah, yeah. My one team trade list, the Toronto. No. <laughs> uh, anyways. <laughs> but you're right. If you're Dubas, that you, then you're like, okay. We need an overhaul. Hey, you, got so much. you don't you don't cut those Tim Horton commercials with your buddy all these years. And He's going to go, Colorado, hundred percent. Go to Toronto. It's Colorado. There's no question. It's Colorado. If it's anywhere, it's Colorado. Not Montreal. But <laughs> when you're still wow. at the level he's at, yeah. and this organization is heading south before it heads north mm -hmm. anytime soon, then I. I cannot believe that he can go through 82 games like he's gone the last three weeks. Yeah. What's crazy about the Colorado suggestion is there aren't many teams where he would go and you'd be like, I get it, because he can't play in the Metro. He's not going to go play for the Flyers. He's not going to go play for the Rangers or someone he's been head-to-head -head with. He's not going to go to Canada, really. None of the teams boy, make sense. Boy, the Flyers, I mean, that would be... <laughs> I mean, that's Brett Favre <laughs> going to the Vikings. Yeah, yeah there's, no, you know, there's no world. Like, Colorado, like, you can do it. The only thing there is Landis Gog will come back. No. Mm. Listen, everybody, everything that I've talked to says it is... He's got a very unique injury. Sure. Did that, he cartilage that replacement? No one's no one's been able to kind of recover from. Well, no one's, I don't think, done it in hockey where they've tried to It's a long it. shot at yeah. best. To play, period. To play. Well, to, I, I, yeah, I like in the NHL. You could play, yeah. but at, at 50 or 60% of your, mm -hmm. your strength that you need. Right. So, so him playing in playoffs this year is not happening. Again, I've, the people that I've talked to, yeah. highly, highly unlikely. Well, there's your Crosby Bunny, Avs fans right there. Yeah, it just makes the most sense. Like, 
but you can't picture him. Think of the Canadian markets. Like, he's not going to go play for the stinky Habs. They're not ready put, for put it. Put it this way. They, they went into the trade market. Colorado went into the trade market without any thought that Landis Cog was going to return yeah. ever. It is almost like a bonus mm-hmm. if some miracle happens. Round three. And, 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 his, and, and his contract comes back on the books. Right, but in playoffs, it doesn't matter. So. No, it doesn't yeah. matter, but it does matter if you traded for something that carried over to next season, right. and then you had to bring his contract back. Right. So they have, they, they've moved on as if he's never coming back. Their game plan going into the trade deadline was that he's not coming back mm-hmm. ever, and if he does, figure it out then. then we'll figure it out then. Makes a lot of sense, and I agree with the decision to do that. I hope for his sake. The last time he played a game, he lifted the Stanley Cup. That was two seasons ago now. So it's crazy. Yeah. It's been a long time. But yeah. Sid to Canada would be very fun. It would. Vancouver I wonder if he would the, ever did Vancouver work. Well, the I mean, I was gonna say the Jimmy Rutherford connection, but it's like everyone loves Sid. It's not yeah. gonna be like no <laughs> <It's like laughs> hey. Crosby kid. Yeah. What was his favorite team growing up? Montreal. But what's they but they're, they're, not, they're not ready for it. Listen. Couple signings and Sid. Oh come on! I'm just come on. I don't just know. If, listen, at the wall we are with absolutely. What, what do you think we do on this show? Buddy Slavkovsky's taking a step. Oh, he I mean, has. He looks Sid good. Has, yeah, I've noticed him for the first time ever. What a <laughs> step! Forget forget about reality here. Just Sid as a Montreal Canadian. I mean, my God. As, yeah, listen. I there's not That's a game any changer. I, there is nothing. Don't get me wrong. There is nothing that would break my heart more than that. But for the game, it's amazing. But for Leaf fans, it's a nightmare. It's a total nightmare. Just given how different the colors are, like seeing yeah, them come out very, very, very weird. Oh. Very weird. Yeah. Anyways, do you want to do? We'll do game time on the other side of the break. Oh, okay. How's that? My producer has spoken. There we go. Game time. When we return to Real Kipper and Born. We're back. What time is it, Sammy? Oh, sorry. I was just looking at it. something stupid. It's game time. Q, eh? It's game time. Presented by Bet365. Buddy. Is it the, the, okay. They gave Relax. him a fastball, and he just kept <laughs> the bat. No, you didn't even whiff. I look like you a, didn't even lift the bat off your shoulder. You got caught looking. I look like uh, Isaiah kiner falefa out there. Can't touch a heater. That's <laughs> such an obscure reference. Well, he's a Jay, pitcher, he's a, right? yes. No, he's a Jays guy. Oh. He, Buddy, what's going on with the Jays, by the way, real quick? I don't know. So Isaiah kiner falefa is a guy that the Jays, kind of like a utility guy okay. that the Jays gave a lot of money to. And like, mo- there's been like multiple articles about how he got the most, he got the best contract in the offseason by far, based on his actual ability. Yeah, awesome. That's he's, great to hear. He's people are gonna not enjoy him. I promise you. But hey, the Jays are a lot of them are having hot springs. Varsho's been good. Vlad's been good. Okay, listen. But who, all the pitchers are hurt. I, so, I am an absolute nobody to tell get, to give Joey Votto any no, advice boy. at all. Oh, okay, the guy's made like two hundred and fifty million dollars. Yeah. Won an MVP. But, buddy, don't ever tell anybody that you rolled over your ankle stepping on a bat. <laughs> okay? Make something up. Yeah. But do not my old bones admit crumbled. that. That, listen, my dad's 90. Yeah. That's what he's doing right now. <laughs> he's rolling over his ankle somewhere. I thought, I thought you were going to say don't write pretentious handwritten notes and post them on Twitter. That's what I thought you were going to say. Roll my ass no. at you. Um, oh, oh, yeah. What was this last year? So all of a sudden, it's like he's trying to make the Jays. Anyways, uh, it's game time. Presented by Bet365. Visit the app for latest odds and find out why it's never no, ordinary. Let me just stop you. Did you uh, read Bet365 the note? Bet365 must be 19 Probably plus. Probably not, right? Ontario only. <laughs> Curse of sorry for you. Please play responsibly. Please don't read during our sponsor read. Thank you. I wrote. I didn't read it. Shocker. I, I read uh, Adam Lascaris, who put it out. In regular typed out. Ah. So I read a, a version of it where I could actually read it. I'm because, impressed you read it. That's because good. his handwriting is impossible to read. I couldn't read it at all. Could you read it? I, I did, but I admit it was hard to read. It was really hard yeah. to read. I gave up. My ADD, I'm like, nope. <laughs> <laughs> I, I ain't getting through this. All right. all right, so there's some hockey games tonight. Uh, 13 games, I think, in fact, tonight. Lots of teams playing. Um, there's a couple that I'm looking at. I, I do... The, uh, sorry, what is it? I just lost it here. The Blues and Colorado are two hot teams. Uh, I think the Colorado Avalanche are going for seven straight wins tonight. And the St. Louis Blues have won four in a row. 
who are starting to creep up the standings towards giving the um, giving the Golden Knights a bit of a you know a bit of a scare. Mm-hmm. So they're a big time long shot on home ice against the hot Colorado Avalanche, as they should be. But you know, as I like to do once in a while on this show, I like to take a shot. So give me the red hot St. Louis Blues at plus one eighty on home ice against the Colorado Avalanche. And if you wanted to do the anti Vegas parlay where you're thinking that the you want the Vegas Golden Knights to lose and miss the playoffs, like many of our Edmonton listeners probably do and Vancouver listeners probably do, mm-hmm. give me a Tampa Bay Lightning who are in Vegas tonight to take on the Golden Knights at plus 115, who have been playing well recently, and the St. Louis Blues. That parlay with those two teams plays plus, plus 502. Ooh, so buddy. the little anti-Vegas Golden Knights parlay. I can't imagine something that would unite hockey fans like the Golden Knights missing playoffs. Could you imagine the support, the outcrying of applause (laughs) from around the NHL if this team pulls all those strings to get all these guys and their million dollar or $100 million cap and they miss playoffs? It, it is not, why it's is not it, that far of the realm of possibility. Why is it pulling strings? Why don't you just say cheated to get this well, line That's up. what I did they say. Did, they, didn't, <laughs> they didn't cheat. They didn't cheat. There's not no, one bit of cheating. There's no cheating. No. No. They, the, oh, the smart GM, you know, lo, uh, used a loophole to get a sick team in the most important time I of the year. I think it's semantics here. If a guy can play before the end of the regular season, you have him not play so mm. you can rig the salary cap. I'll, I'll call that cheating. Um, if, if you done, I just had one thing I wanted to mention that the San Jose Sharks are in Nashville tonight. You don't see this very often. The Nashville Predators are minus five twenty five favorites against the San Jose Sharks. Oh so I don't would, consider them an NHL team anymore. That's basically what they're saying. That's like that's an NHL team playing an AHL team minus five twenty five. Right. It's a massive. What's the other players. side of that? Plus I mean, three. Plus three ninety. Uh, Still to a hockey team, team to win a game in the know. NHL. I'm it's... not telling you to bet on the Sharks, but I'm definitely not telling you to bet the Taking Preds. Taking plus a couple of goals. Or <laughs> At minus 525. Okay, I'm done. Let me read my end because he was so rudely reading. <laughs> that was game time. Presented by Bet365. Visit the app for the latest odds. Find out why it's never ordinary. At Bet365, must be 19 plus. Ontario only. Please play responsibly. Thank you, Bet365. I'm just wondering on your Colorado tonight, mm. if they get any goaltending at all out of your give like it, are they not the team to beat i love i agree the trennan and duhame additions i know middle stat uh, goes a long way for them but i love that they suddenly have this like hard for checking physical fourth line that's something to me that they were really missing down the down the order and it reminds me of adding goodrow and coleman for tampa bay you know, it's like a couple of guys. I don't think they have that level of offense, but I, I just like the way. But we never play. thought that they had that level of offense back then, too. Coleman, those guys, and, you're right. right. Yeah, yeah, you could see we some just potential. Thought they would be like, and actually, Trennan scored 24 as a rookie, if I'm not mistaken. So I'm going to go ahead and say he can shoot some in the net if need be. I'm just starting to think too that Edmonton just didn't have that same push, and I just wonder if there's a psychological disadvantage for that team to go. Okay, we added a couple of depth guys, but we didn't do what Vegas did, and we didn't do what Colorado did. Just to go back to Trennan, he had 24 points, 17 goals. My bad. Okay. Right? 17 wondered. goals yeah. is still, yeah, yeah it's very, still good very good. So I know that from following their like, more analytics-bent fans, they're not happy with Henrique so far. He's been playing with Kane and Connor Brown, and that line is underwater, like below 30% in most like shot attempt stats. and Yeah. Um, around 30%. There wasn't a, a Tortorella scratching uh, the, the captain story, but Sam, Sam uh, Carrick was a healthy scratch, I think, in the second game. Mm-hmm. And I'm it's not, not like, shocked by that. He's kind of fringy. Shocked, but like, if, when you make a trade, mm-hmm. I don't know if you want a like, healthy scratch a guy well, two days after or two yeah. games in off One of thing, a trade. Like a playoff score. game, but right away. Didn't he score? He scored a big goal recently against Colorado. He scored a big goal. Yeah. Didn't he fight last... that mutant Olivier in his first game? Too? Olivier and he scored. He's been yeah. there a couple of games and he's out. Yeah. I don't know. But yeah, the Carrick, Perry, Yanmark, fourth line. Not bad, but it's not Trent and Duhame, Cogliano for me. Just to me, the Colorado Avalanche, when push, push comes to shove, I just, I worry about Edmonton against them. I really do. Walker. 
Kind of good I Saturday night. You the other night. Kind of good yeah. live Saturday I, night. I still, like, I think this offense, this Oilers offense, is so head and shoulders above even Colorado in terms of creating there's offense. Just, I just don't know But there's just a can part of the Oilers still defensively. And I don't know if you went back and, and we saw the, the game-winning goal Saturday, of course, off of the Nathan McKinnon play out of the corner. Yeah. To uh, Le- uh, Lekkonen. Is Lekkonen, yeah. Right? Yeah. But go watch Leon. Bouchard oh. go in with Nate McKinnon and how it was almost as if he said, ah, nothing's going to happen and I don't have to play them that this hard. And Nate I'm just going to. Through the skates, he'll pick up oh, one touch. But even if, even if Bouchard's just 15% harder on Nate. You know, they go into a shootout. They yeah, lose well, it. I mean, Leon, too, who's just like, yeah, nothing's happening here. And then, yeah, yeah it's in the back of your net. I, I, I mean, mean they, they have one. You accept, I mean, Leon's never going to win a. He's not going to win a Selkie. No. Soon, and he's never been that. So I will say there's a guy on every pair for the Oilers in Bouchard, Nurse, and CeCe, who, and I know CeCe's been better, but who you're like, they can make a, a, a mistake. Mm-hmm. You know, they, there can be some misreads. There can be some did, moments. Did you see that? Uh, the person that tweeted their, they got their Fanatics Oilers jersey. A 97. 97. Dry <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Fanatics taking a beating. I didn't see that. They're taking a beating, and they haven't even started with the NHL jersey. <laughs> Send that out. I, don't. I mean, I'd keep it. It's a, at that yeah. point, it's like, well, this is a collector's item. No one's going to have this baby. Yeah. So I'll someone say, put, put Connor in Leon's body and see what happens. It'd be pretty special. <laughs> that would be interesting. All right. Uh, did the NHL general manager meetings end today, or is it still going? Uh, are they going to milk another couple of days happening. out of it? They're doing stuff. What are they doing? Kip, you can't put your leg over the boards anymore. It's let's, huge news. Let's look important here. They should just release a so press what, what, statement of what they've... So they, they agreed to go to the, the rules committee to make a few tweaks, including and a leg cannot be on the boards now? Yeah, because the linesman got cut. But there are some interesting things. There's two... Mark Messier would never have gotten played at all. Who's he always hanging the leg over? I don't, it's insane that you were ever allowed to do it, to it's, be honest. It's one leg over the boards and then looking at Keenan going, who's up? And then he goes, <laughs> uh, you are. Yeah, that's yeah. what I thought. Yeah, you're already on the ice, so <laughs> I guess that's you. Um, but two changes that are really interesting to me. So if a penalty is called for puck over glass, they can ask for video to review to prove it did hit something. In the case they're wrong, insta five on three. You know how hard it is, like that you're like you're banking on video evidence if it barely touches a board or the tip of the glass. Like yeah. it'll be we're not sure, so it, the call will stand as is. Five on three is a really it's a significant punishment to me, for they challenging. They didn't even need to announce that because that'll literally never happen. Yeah, never happen. No one will ever challenge that. Nobody. Like, it was one thing to have Jordan Bean for the Leafs who gets these offsides yeah. and yeah. these hand passes and he nails all those. There's, there's four officials closer than you as a head coach or anybody that's in a video room buried in a in a dressing room somewhere yeah, that you're going to see it better than them. But there are times when it did touch something and it goes to a power play where it shouldn't. So if those guys can catch it, I mean, I love the, the risk. The other one, Kip, is um, if, you're, if you get a high sticking penalty and you challenge and say it was actually friendly fire, it was their own stick, which happens, right, guys? Yeah. Teammates hit them in the face, whatever. And you're wrong. It was your, your team five on three. You've given up a five on three by getting that challenge wrong, which they're really trying to deter challenges. But if it's a blatant one and you know. So they needed to go spend $1,400 a night at, at, at the Boca Raton <laughs> Resort to come up with this. You know what this sounds like? This this sounds like really? sour grapes for a guy who doesn't get to go anymore. That's what this is. <laughs> you're, da- you're, you're damn right. Well, I mean, you were literally just in form. <laughs> <laughs> oh, isn't there one that, uh, that goalies now you warm up? Yes. If what, the, what is that? If a goalie is pulled with a concussion, like he gets hit in the head yeah. and they pull him, the backup can go in and get a warm up. Which, does that mean you dump a bucket of pucks no, at the hash and so, shoot him? I specifically remember. They used to do this. 
being a kid, going to Own Sound Platers games with my grandparents, and when the goalie got pulled or a goalie got hurt, they would go out there with like one guy with like yeah, three you, you pucks, put up with the hashies and, and you just, just shoot, just fire, and make a little saves. I remember that specifically. That did that ever happen in the NHL? I don't know, but it's not. It's, yeah, it's, it's it strange does. and embarrassing and weird, but it does happen I don't in the know. NHL. I can't think of. A worse way for 18,000 people to We're all going to watch this guy get hit in the with their, seven th- times. thumbs up their you-know-what while this guy's <laughs> catching pucks. It's, it's a, actually really bad. It's a horrible... It's a horrible look. And especially because if it's the other team's goalie, just a great chance for chance for Bronx cheers. Yeah. Every time he stops one of the warm <laughs> yeah. yeah! How about this? If your player... So we're in the uh, neutral zone, I high stick the puck, and you know it's me and you can play the puck next and don't, the face-off will move up a zone. Or, sorry, for the other team. They'll get to go into our zone for the face-off. So if you play it right away, it'll be right where it happened. But if you don't, then we're going to move but the face-off a zone. They, they don't even call, like, uh, uh, offsides, deliberate offsides. They're supposed to go in their offensive zone, too. They never do I, that. I, they, right. they don't. You're right. They don't want to accuse guys no. of doing things. No. So... All these things, to Kipper's point, feels like this could have been a Zoom meeting. <laughs> feels like feels like the fellas could have gone on a could have gone on a Zoom. You gotta get them in a room once a year. <laughs> For what? Why are we going to they, South Dakota they, to they, do it? You might as well go to Florida. They killed the NHL draft traditionally because they didn't want to spend the money. And then they went to the Sphere in and, Vegas. And, <laughs> but they'll go down there for that for these rule changes. Yeah. Don't, don't tell Trotz either. I have some sphere. ideas on how it should be covered. Um, Sportsnet, talk to me. Send us down there. We'll show you how to do it. Oh, yes. will we ever? Even if we do a bad job, we'll just do it once, right? We'll just do it with Reynolds. Yeah. We'll go down with Reynolds, <laughs> poolside. We'll be ready to rock. The only brutal part is, like, you, you can't golf. Like, there's no time. Oh, really? No, they sit around all day. What do you mean you can't golf? Sammy fit it in. Like, you can't, can't get up at 6.30 no, and go play golf? No, 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 no. Okay. No, they, the meeting started at 8, and they go to, like, 3 or 4 o'clock. Oh, so you just, no so you just time. sit around. They just sit around and do nothing. It's a Seinfeld episode. <laughs> nothing. <laughs> so, uh, I know we're going to probably get into this a little more tomorrow, cover the Washington Capitals a little closer tomorrow because at least play them uh, on the second half of back-to-back. <sighs> Starting to... Come wait, to the, wait, what's with that? <sighs> sorry, what does that mean? Sorry, sports beard. But I'm starting to come to the realization that this record is probably going to fall. Obviously Ovi's he's getting, getting hot better. again. Yeah. So he'll finish with 27, 29. What's he at? 20, 21. 21. He scored just two. He had two last night. So just one of how many guys have done it 19 years in a row? Yeah, not many. 20 goal right? seasons. Gordy Howe and very, Jogger, yeah. Brendan Shanahan. Really? Yeah. I don't know how Brandon many. Brandon Shanahan? Had? I think so. Wow. I, I, I do recall hearing his name. Yeah, I just... But he, Ovi's the only one to do it with the same team. Yeah. Buddy, they'll bring Ovi out there. And he's beating the record. He'll be on the, like, a Russian gas with a mask. <laughs> they'll bring him out there and, like, it's, Bane. Just it get is, him through it. It is still... <laughs> unbelievable how durable and healthy he can still stay Mm -hmm. he's playing 20 minutes a night he doesn't Mm -hmm. come off the power play Mm -hmm. at times i'm sure he was at 96 percent of power play time on ice for his team last i checked i don't know where he's at now just looking at his hockey db page 843 it just jumps out to you and it's 894 is is the record it's like oh boy it's Uh, fallen oh he's gonna be the guy unfortunately guys uh, uh you also have on uh, on the lineup, uh, Dubas wants Crosby to finish wow. his career. I know we've had this conversation, yeah. but he did speak a little bit to uh, to Pierre Lebrun, did he not? Yeah. And uh, did he also mention not talking about Toronto's situation at all? Well, he said, I think it's pretty clear where we stand on the fact that everyone would like him, like to see him and end his career in Pittsburgh. It's my intention that those years that were back and definitely competitive. So it's my intention... And everyone would like to see it. Mm-hmm. To me, that's not like he's definitely back. Right. I don't know if he wants to be the guy that does it. Traded Sid. I think that's just that's, that's career a, that's, defining. That's a career defining. You will always be the guy that 
like ended Sydney's run with the Pittsburgh Penguins ugly. And could you ever get over again with the Penguins fans? No. I you know, so. like you don't want to be in year two I don't, I don't of know. your tenure and have everyone be like, that's the guy. But you need, you need, uh, you can sign Sid, but you need to move him for a couple of firsts or a top blue chip prospect. It's just, it's a waste having Sid score 90 points and you're going to miss the playoffs again next year for the third time. And I uh, still think they might get in. And this year? Ah, uh, they may—they're going to win tonight. And oh, two, so Buffalo's getting in too. No, nope. <laughs> who else? Who else have you got? Nope, just Pittsburgh. Pittsburgh. Hey, you had the, the the Leafs thing. You wanted me to mention the the quote that he had. Yeah, said uh, this. I think it's more that that I simply don't want to create any waves in my wake because I'll, uh, they impact a lot of people who I care about and loved working with, and I want to see them have success. Unloading my personal feelings is what a lot of people want. And it may make me feel good in the short run, but uh, it's not of any benefit to the Pittsburgh Penguins or the dozens of players and staff in Toronto who I want to have success. Oh, so he's thinking about the staff in Toronto. He's, how, he's taking the high road, boys. Taking so the he's, high road. He's thinking about the staff in Toronto. But I think he said some things without saying them. <laughs> you know what I mean? By being like, I'd like to get it off my chest and personally it might feel good in the short term. Does not reek of someone who's... Holding back praise and love for the organization. Oh, that's just got a book written all over it. <laughs> Does it ever? <laughs> and they'd be like, in the league, be like, that damn Nick Kiprios. He wouldn't die. <laughs> it all started with no, it that did article not. in the Toronto Star. No, it did not. <laughs> it's like, that's when I became the Joker. <laughs> the Joker. Huge night in the NHL tonight. So we mentioned the Pittsburgh Jersey game, whatever. But you got the Rangers playing the Winnipeg Jets, which is. Two teams trying to win Two their hot teams. Yeah, trying to win their respected divisions. Uh, the Islanders fighting to stay in it against the Avs. I mean, we got pretty much, is it all the Canadian teams going? We got lots of good hockey tonight, including the Toronto Maple Leafs at the Philadelphia Flyers, who are minus their captain. Sean I know uh, I mentioned Buffalo, and nobody believes that they're going to get in, but I, I really like Middlestat for. Uh, by, uh, Byram. Byram is a good. He's worked out in Buffalo so yes. far. Yeah. Yeah. And his minutes are huge. And listen, I, I think those defensemen are hard to find. He's going to take heat off of Darlene and and Power and allow yeah. them to be better, right? No, I think gonna... he's he's thriving there, and I think the Buffalo Sabers are a better hockey club for it. They're going to get thumped tonight by that, the Canucks. Though. That trade could be disaster. Could be for Colorado. Yeah. Yeah, I'm not not a huge middle stat fan. And he's a UFA, which I didn't realize. Look at the series UFA. All right. So what they gave him. Anyways. So like JB said, pick a game, enjoy it. And we're back tomorrow on Real Kipper and Born. If you get a chance, give us a rating and review. We'd love to hear from you. Enjoy your games, everybody. <laughs>